Good with y'all, man. It's your boy Tick AK Game Fanatic to Michael Jordan the Gaming. Also, the Rebel YouTube on the ground. I'm back with yet another video. Now, before I continue, if you have not seen the Mortal Kombat 2021 movie, please vacate the video. There will be spoilers. So, if you haven't seen it, this is your warning. Please leave the video, go watch the movie, and then come back and see my opinions about the Mortal Kombat movie. Alright? So, I hope you guys are. Hope you heard that. <laughs> Alright, so I just finished watching this movie. Uh it was, last night I watched it. It'd be the twenty fourth, it was Saturday. I ran into some issues originally trying to watch it. Um uh, first problem was I didn't know my LG the OLED didn't have support for HBO Max uh, before I paid for the subscription and found out that it doesn't it doesn't support it. So I couldn't even watch it in four K and HDR. Uh, literally I was going to watch it on my computer but it was just so bad of quality because for some reason on the computer they don't support it either so you have to watch it on the the website and it's just like 720p or something so I hooked up my Playstation 4 because people said I could look at it on that so I hooked up my PS4 Pro and I watched it on that and even though it said 4K it wasn't 4K it was like 1080p so I didn't get the HDR or none of that because I guess only the PS5 and the Xbox One X gets that luxury so that sucks but, uh, yeah, man, I was, before watching the movie, I was seeing everybody talking about it on my Facebook. There were people that were saying they liked it, people that said they didn't like it. Um, and in the Discord, there were people that were saying they liked it, and there were people that said they didn't like it. It's funny, because a lot of the younger dudes in the Discord were trying to say only the old heads, a.k.a. people my age, uh, were not liking the film because of the nostalgia, because we saw the 90s version. But it was a lot of people on my friends list who are my age on Facebook, and all of them were, a lot of them were actually liking the movie. It was only a few of us that didn't like it, and I just said us, so now you know that I didn't really like the movie. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I, I, I really didn't enjoy it that much, man. It, it was crazy. I wanted to go in liking the movie. When I first read about it and heard it was going to be R-rated, I was like, okay, this was the Mortal Kombat we should have gotten back in 95. Because when I saw that as a kid, like, I remember just being let down. Like, I was a huge Mortal Kombat fan uh, as a kid. My dad bought it for me. My mom was against it because she thought it was demonic. Because she's almost like she's almost like Bobby, Bobby Boucher's mother. But just not as bad, but she's close. Uh, so she was like, oh, I don't want you to get that game. It's demonic. And my dad ended up becoming a champion and was like, look... You want this game? And I was like, yeah, but mom said, I, I can't get it. He was like, I'm not asking you that. I said, do you want the game? I'm willing to buy it for you. Um, and I was like, I don't know what mother said. And he was like, no, no, I'm asking you, do you want me to get this game? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, I'm going to buy it for you. He ended up buying it for me. This was when I was like eight or seven or eight years old. Uh, so shout out to him, man. He came through, you know, bought me the game because uh, my mom just thought it was way too mature and, and evil. She didn't want me to play it. Um... But, yeah, I remember seeing a 90s movie. My brother-in-law rented both that and Street Fighter for me uh, from Hollywood Videos. <laughs> like, some of y'all younger guys may not know what Hollywood Videos is or Blockbuster, but those were the stores we would go to for rentals. This is before Netflix and stuff was around. You actually had to go out and go to a store and rent, you know, VHS tapes and things like that. Um, so, he rented both of those for me, and I remember watching Street Fighter first, and I was like, eh. You know, it's cool. You know, I wish they had some more of the moves from the game. And John claude Van Damme being Guile was kind of weird because he's from Belgium. He's not from the United States. But, you know, it was cool for what it was. Uh, and then I watched uh, Mortal Kombat after that, and I felt so let down. Like, I I really didn't like that movie, and I thought the Street Fighter movie was better. Um, and it was because I went in thinking it was going to be like what I imagined the game being, like blood and guts and all that and finishing moves and stuff like that, which... It was a PG-13 movie. They, they made it that way because they knew a lot of kids that were playing it were underage, like me. And they wanted us all to, you know, to see it and pay to see it. So they had to make it PG-13, which I I would have preferred them to make it rated R. Um, but fortunately, it didn't go down that way. So after reading about this new movie and hearing that it was going to be rated R, like I was, man, I was with it. I was like, let's go. Like, I'm really trying to see this. Um... And then that's when we got the trailer, man. I saw the trailer, and I saw some red flags. Like, it was some red flags in the trailer that I was looking at. I was like, oh, no. Nah. Like, who is this guy? I didn't know who the, the main character was. I'm like, who is this dude? Like, it ain't Luke Kang? Like, who is he? And then I had to do some research, find out his name was Cole. I was like, what? Cole? Who is this guy? He ain't in the games. 
kind of find out he's an original character they're trying to make. And I guess they're going to add him to the MK11 game or something. Um, and then, like, I, I saw the way Scorpion looked, and I was like, okay, they're kind of making him look like the Mortal Kombat 11 Scorpion. I mean, I'd rather them do the original Mortal Kombat, you know, from Mortal Kombat 1, something similar to that, and then Sub-Zero, the same thing. Like, I didn't really care for their looks too much. Um, and then, like, I heard the way Scorpion said, get over here, and I really didn't like that. I was like, oh, no, nah, that didn't sound good. And he didn't really look vengeful enough for me. Like, he didn't have the, the white eyes. It was like, more like again, more of like the Mortal Kombat 11 eyes, so they were like a yellowish color. Um, and then I saw the Melina picture of I mean, a video, which you see right now. Like, Melina, I, I, it was a black woman, and I was like, okay, that's not Melina. Um, and then her teeth didn't really look like Tark car talking i can't say their name it didn't like their teeth to me like they're they're normally like super long fangs that are super sharp and her teeth just look like blades teeth from the blade movie so i was like yo like first of all she's black then she's supposed to be asian and look people try to make this argument to justify a look in the games her character is asian now you can and people try to also run this narrative well they're from another realm there's no asian another realm okay well they're supposed to be oriental then their oriental descent. Her and Katana both is. She's a clone of Katana. And in order to complete the clone, they had to use blood from a, a, a Tarkak, Kartakin or whatever their name is, which is Baraka's uh, species. Um, and then they added that to her blood, and, and that's how she has those crazy fangs. Um, so, yeah, like, that was Shao Kahn trying to make her. So, like, it just didn't it wasn't to the source material and that's the problem with these these video game movies and that's what kills them every time they don't follow the source material all the way down to 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 Mario in the night in the early 90s all the way to the Resident Evil titles with Alice being introduced and it just and it never really followed the to the narrative like if they follow the narrative properly the movies would be good but I mean it has to be written and shot well as well but you got to follow the narrative, man. Like, and a lot of them try to do reimagining, and it's just never good. Like, I don't understand. Like, I need maybe I need to become a director. I need to go to school and learn to write better and all that stuff so I can become a director, and I'll start, you know, making... I take all video games and make movies out of them, and I do just like remakes. It'll literally be like a remake. That's all you have to do. It's like you take the source material, you still follow that, and you make very little changes just to throw people off a little bit but you still keep the same exact story and narrative like this movie it started off pretty decent but they, they strayed away from the story from the beginning um as you see in the picture here uh Bihan, who is also sub-zero he kills scorpion we know this um but the real story scorpion and Bihan were rivals two different clans you had the lin Kuei, which is sub-zeros and then you had the uh i forget what they called the shri ryu something rather which was uh, Scorpius clan um, and they were rivals from the jump so what happened in the real story is Quan Chi sent them on a mission to find this pendant to bring back Shinnok which is like <clears throat> this super sorcerer dude so they both went for it he was trying to set them up to fight each other which it happened they fought each other Sub-Zero beat up Scorpion because Sub-Zero had um, he had mystical powers so uh, Scorpion didn't so he ended up beating the mess out of him but he didn't kill him um, so then what happened was Quan Chi disguised himself as Sub-Zero and then had the Lin Kuei go in the village and kill Scorpion's family and his whole clan. And then also had uh, these kill Scorpion. Um, and that's one of the narratives. Also, the other narrative was that uh, he sent Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei to kill all of them, like he, he kind of set it up and had them all go kill uh, Scorpion's family and Scorpion. So when um, when Scorpion died, Shinnok was supposed to talk to Scorpion pretty much kind of like how the spawn there went where he spawned with the hell. He talked to the devil, whoever the guy was. He told Spawn, hey, I want you to run my troops uh, so we can fight, the, uh, fight heaven or whatever. You're gonna run my army. And he was like, yeah, I'll do that. And he was like, if you do, I can help you get revenge. And he was like, yeah, I definitely want revenge. Uh, so, yeah, do that and I'll do whatever you want. Same thing with Scorpion. So, Quan Chi was like, yo, look, if you help me out and become my assassin for the Netherrealm, I'll, I'll let you get revenge on the person that harmed you and your family. 
and they showed him like a video of uh you know not a video but a vision of sub-zero murdering him and his family so scorpion was like okay cool but for now on, i'm not hanzo anymore i'm scorpion so he he got his mystical powers which is fire from the you know from another realm from hell and he was sent back to try to find Sub Zero. So in the movie, he gets killed by Bihan. He kills his whole family and his whole clan. And then he kills Scorpion. Scorpion just falls out. He falls on the ground. And all of a sudden, he just disappears into a fire. And then that's it. And then Raider comes in. Uh, hears um, uh, Scorpion's uh, newborn daughter crying in the house. And goes in and grabs her before uh, Bihan could find her and kill her. And then I guess she lived her life and had kids and everything and passed on Scorpion's lineage. And that's when we go to Cole. So Cole is this guy that's supposed to be Scorpion's descendant. The, he's the pointless character. I didn't like his character whatsoever. He didn't really add much to the to the film, to the, the lore of Mortal Kombat. I guess they're going to add him to, a, to the game later on as a DLC character. He doesn't even look that impressive. I, I'll talk about his abilities later. But, um... It was, it was just so many things about the story that was just messed up and, and ruined it for me. So, we could talk about uh, Kung Lao and, and Liu Kang when they first, leave, like, when they meet them. Like, In fact, let's go back. Let's just go to Sonya. Sonya meeting meeting uh, Cole after Sub-Zero tried to kill them uh, kill them in the family because Shang Tsung sent them back to take out all the, the Earth Realm champions. Or, uh, I guess you could say they're, they're, they're heroes. So, he goes back and tries to kill them. Jax helps him escape, tells him to go seek out Sonya. Jack loses his arms to Sub-Zero in a fight, which that's not how it really happened. He actually lost his arms in an explosion trying to protect Sonya uh, from a grenade. Um, so, that's again changed. Uh, but, <clears throat> Sonya has Kano locked away in, in her basement in some type of room in the back. Now, they had a lot of cool things in the back room that I liked that was Easter eggs. So, like you saw pictures of Nightwolf. Um, Kodakon, stuff like that on the wall. Um, it was a nice little Easter egg for people who played the game, to, you know, know a lot about the lore and all that. But it had Kano sitting there in a chair as like a prisoner. Now, if you know the backstory of Kano and Sonya, like she hates him with a passion. It's literally as like Scorpion with Sub Zero. She wants to kill him because he killed her partner in front of her. Like he is a gruesome murderer mercenary. So like she has just bent like bent on rage. She's been bent on rage and revenge on killing him. So why in the world would she have him just chained to her chair inside of a room? Like she would have killed him as quickly as possible. All right. So that didn't make any sense. Um, Kung Lao and Liu Kang like they made Liu Kang a punk in this movie. He's supposed to be the chosen one. He's supposed to be the one that's supposed to be the champion. But he's he doesn't know how to. To fight apparently he was having an issue fighting Cabal like it was just a lot of things like it was, like they made him so weak in this movie and made Cole the guy nobody cares about so strong now he had to obviously learn his abilities uh, all of them had to learn and that's what they had to do that's why they went to Raiden's Palace uh, to try to seek seek that out for and see if they can learn stuff about the tournament and <clears throat> Liu Kang pretty much met them there and was like yeah you gotta learn your arcana that's another dumb thing about the movie, the Arcana. So, pretty much, that's their special abilities that you see in the games. Uh, apparently, they have to learn this somehow. Um, and the way they learn it is pretty dumb. It's uh, obviously the person that wrote it was a big fan of Dragon Ball. I'll just say that. So, apparently, the first person to learn his Arcana was Kano. And the way they did it was uh, Kung Lao and Liu Kang pretty much pissed him off. They was roasting him to the point where he got mad because he was being disrespectful. Now, the Kano character is funny. I like the Kano character. That is literally how Kano is written to be. He is supposed to be a dirtbag uh, murderer. You can't trust him. He will literally turn on you at the snap of a, a coin. You know, he's all, he's just there for himself. So, he played his role good. He was pretty funny throughout the whole movie. Um, but he was trying to... He was coming at Kung Lao pretty much being disrespectful and racist. He called that man Kung Pao. <laughs> which I thought was funny because I love that movie. Um, Kong Kung Pao was like, hey, man, pass me an egg roll. Kong Lao was like, okay, bet. Uh, I got this, Luke. Hey. And he like acts like he's going to hand him an egg roll, but then he like says psych and then like eats it, and then he just starts clowning him. And then like he started to get angry, and then Luke Kane was like, hold on, I'm going to clown him too. So he started clowning him because they knew what they were trying to do. All of a sudden, you see like uh, Kano stand up, and he's like yelling and mad about them, like trying to clown him. 
and his eye starts to uh, blink red, and you see, you're like looking at it, you're like, oh, his eye's getting red. And all of a sudden, he shoots a laser out of his eye. Boom. His arcana, he shoots out a laser. Now, if you, again, know the narrative of Mortal Kombat, that's not how he gets his ability. So I think Kano, I forget the real way he got the metal thing on his face and the eye, uh, but I know on the Legacy Mortal Kombat, which kind of did a little bit better job than this film at following the narrative, uh, Jax punched him so hard in his face, he pretty much crushed his face and eye, um, which he had to get it reconstructed, and that's when he, he got the uh, the eye. It's an infrared eye, so you can see in the dark and everything. Um, but also, it was able to shoot lasers. So that's how he got it. He didn't get it from going Super Saiyan. Like, come on, son. Like, it was so stupid. Like, I, I don't understand what, what they came up with that. But, <clears throat> yeah, that's how he's supposed to have gotten his eye. <clears throat> so, yeah. Jax punched him in his eye, destroyed it. All right, so he gets it from getting angry. And he was like, yeah, I'm the first to get Marcana. He's teasing, you know, Cole and all that. Sonya don't care because Sonya is not part of them. Like they even didn't even let her train because she's she doesn't have she's not a chosen one. She doesn't have the tattoo or the whatever it is. So they told her like she couldn't train. Now at the time she was uh she finds out that they had Jax. Jax was laying there like out cold in a coma from getting this getting destroyed by Sub Zero, but he's still alive. So she's like wondering is he gonna live? And they're like I don't know. Somehow he comes back and he's got like these little small scrawny arms. He's trying to learn how to train he's like i can't train because i got these little squawny ugly arms uh they look like they're made out of like bicycle spokes so i can't train and like sonya's like picking on him like ah oh, come on man like that's how i felt like quitting when i was in the military but you know you talked me out of it and all that stuff they had a little moment or whatever so all of a sudden um it's, it flips over to shang song he's out there talking to the nether realm people he's got melina who obviously again shouldn't be black uh she's supposed to be oriental that was annoying Reiko, who looks weird, and why would they choose Reiko from Mortal Kombat 4? Like, he's been in, like, two games. Nobody knows who he is, but they chose him. I don't get it. But Reiko, yeah, they chose Reiko. They could have easily had Reptile be one of the main characters, but they killed off Reptile real quick in the beginning, which we got to see a nice little Easter egg from Kano. He does his finishing move on him by ripping his heart out. You know, that was a nice little Easter egg to the fatality of his. Um, but it could have easily had... Uh, Reptile be there. Rayco though, son. Like a lot of people don't even know who Rayco was, but he was in Mortal Kombat Four. He was always he was also in the Mortal Kombat after Daily and uh, Daily Alliance. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was Annihilation, but he was in that. Um, but he wasn't big and dopey like that. He was actually supposed to be like a ninja, like Scorpion in them. On the first game, he just had instead of a mask, he had like this big black X going across the middle of his face. Um, and then oh, even on the other game, he had the same thing. They decided. For some reason on the movie, they didn't want to put a big black X on his face. They used like some white Samoan looking tattoos that you can barely tell he had a tattoo on his face. Uh, another thing I found out though, on a side note, I heard that uh, that guy is actually the original Zangief from the 95 movie from Street Fighter, which is weird. I didn't know that. So <laughs> if you already should have known it was going to be bad at that point. But yeah, you got that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was weird for them picking Rayco. But it was Rayco and then Cabal. I like Cabal. Cabal looked cool. He just sounded weird. He sounded like some type of country hick. I don't understand why he sounded like that. But uh, yeah, Cabal was pretty cool. He's also one of my favorite characters out of the series. Look at look at him. He looks weird. He looks weird. But uh, apparently, yeah, that was Zanky from Street Fighter. Um, the 95 movie. Uh, he aged pretty well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't understand why they made him Rayco. So you got him. You got Cabal. And then I think you had Natara, who was also from... Um, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance she was the, the vampire chick so Shang Tsung's like hey man uh, he's talking to Sub-Zero he's like I need you to go out find the uh, Earth's champions and kill them or their heroes and kill them and then um, Cabal was like hey yo I think I know how to get to the other heroes um, or whatever and he was like yo what do you mean he was like Kano he was like yo didn't Kano destroy your face he was like yeah but that little dirtbag owes me I can, I can, I can make him switch over if I, we give him a favor so he goes over, finds uh, Kano. Kano's like joking about him, like, yo, the goose crawling back, did not destroy your face. And he's like, yo, you talking big from on the other side of this dag on uh, Force Field. And he's like, man, look, I got a deal for you. Yeah, da, da, da. Give you some money and all this stuff. You can join us in another realm and you'll be a king or whatever. I don't know if he actually said that, but he pretty much, he made, he, he said, yo, you're going you gonna to make out good. So he was like, all right, bet. I'm a dirtbag. I'm going to turn on him. 
Went over there, <clears throat> shot his little laser eye, killed the portal. Let all the nether round people come in. They all come in, start fighting. Uh, Kong Lao was fighting uh, Melina. Uh, Liu Kang was fighting Cabal, getting destroyed, which is all, you know, false. Um, and, uh, why can't they get a Liu Kang that actually sounds like Liu Kang from the game? Like, the original Liu Kang didn't know anything about the game. He didn't watch it. I watched an interview of him uh, that somebody did about two years ago or a year ago. Him and Johnny Cage, both from the movie. And he was talking about how he never played the game. Like, he had no clue about it. He just went to audition for a movie uh, that he heard about. And boom, bang, there it is. He got cast as Luke Kang. So I can understand why he didn't do the sound effects. But Luke Kang is supposed to be based off of Luke. Uh, Mortal, I don't say Luke Kang. Luke Kang is supposed to be based off of Bruce Lee. He's supposed to make the wah noises. This dude, just like the original guy from the 95 movie, did not do any wahs or nothing there. He didn't do any of the high-pitched squeals. Yo. How hard is it to cast somebody? They better tell him about the second movie. He need to sound like Bruce Lee. Like he need to, he need to know, cause like you need to. Man, look, if I was the director of this movie, though, I swear I would have this movie perfect, yo. I swear I need to start. I need to become a director, and I just take all the video game movies and I have them fire, yo. I swear, I would. I need to. Oh, I need to do this. I feel like I'm motivated to do this now. I need to do this. Like I need to. I need to get get somehow get into Hollywood and just like make video game adaptations of of video games i won't do anime because i'm not into anime like that so i'm not messing with that but video games like i gotta i gotta make a good video game movie this is getting sad I, i'm getting sick of this but anyway luke Cage fighting cabal uh i think sonya was fighting no kong lao was fighting i don't know, forget who he was fighting melina was fighting sonya and like she was about to get killed by Melina, but um, Melina was like, yo, you're not even a champion, yo, you're not worth my time, and she, like, teleported away, um, and then all of a sudden, uh, Kano, I think Kano was fighting Cabal or something, I think, I'm not sure, but I know at one point, Jax got knocked out, because he had them little squatty arms, and then uh, Sonya gets thrown to the side next to him, like, around near this, like, edge, and then, like, Kano tries to kill her by shooting this big statue hand down and making it fall on her, and, like, pretty much the big ledge falls on top of her so at this point Jax wakes up he sees her covered up and he just starts freaking out and then his super saiyan trait kicks in his little squatty arms somehow just start sprouting big pieces of metal and technology and now he has his metal arms which is stupid now first of all he shouldn't even got his metal arms at all in the movie if you're a real Mortal Kombat gamer and played the original Mortal Kombat. You know, in a second, second tournament, because I found out this is supposed to be a prequel, apparently, and we'll get to that later on, because there's some stuff that's crazy that makes it not really seem like a prequel, but apparently it is. In the second tournament, Jax appears in the second game, Mortal Kombat 2. He appears. He does not have metal arms, guys. He has real arms. He was just really strong. His arcana of anything should have been him just getting extremely, like, just having extreme strength. And on top of that, or it could have been, he has an ability that he does, which is kind of like a sonic boom, where he does, like, this punch motion, and, like, this sonic wave comes out of, out of that arm. That's one of his abilities. That should have been his arcana. How in the world did he sprout metal arms over his little squatty bicycle spoke arms, yo? That don't make any sense. Yo, this... <laughs> It's Wolfie, bro. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, yo, he better not sprout metal arms. He better not sprout metal arms. I thought I thought Sonya was going to give him metal arms. He better not sprout. And then I saw the arms come. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm about to turn this joint off. Oh, my gosh. So he saves Sonya. And then, like, Raiden steps in. He teleports all the people away. But unfortunately, before he got to do that, um, Shane Sung calls, uh, he pulls over Kung Lao after Kung Lao kills Natara with his uh, patented finish move from, I think, Mortal Kombat 10, where he has the blade spin, and then he normally will pull you through it, but she kind of flew through it and died. And then he said this little cheesy, flawless victory, which was lame. Um, but he did that, and then that's when Shane Sung put him over, like, your soul is mine, another Easter egg instantly. And, uh, no, not, not now, bro. I'm oh, sorry, people were texting me uh, to play some games. Uh, so he um, pulls him over, takes his soul. Liu Kang could do nothing. He got blocked by Kapal because he, Liu Kang apparently isn't the chosen one anymore in this movie. He, he's, he's trash. Uh, the chosen one, I'm guessing, which is Cole, 
wasn't he didn't have his ability yet and he was just right next to you know this while it's happening but he tried nothing he just watched him second soul when he was like right next to him so that happened so kong lao gets body um and then you know Ray, raiden just takes him all the way and i hate the way raiden looks he looks goofy i don't like his outfit this is a nitpick i don't like his outfit at all it just he, it, it doesn't look like raiden his eyes i don't like the way they did his eyes like just make them ex just all white you know then it could be raiden or just only have him white when he's doing his abilities but i don't like the look of him um and his outfit just looks weird like make him look like the raiden a white outfit with like a blue thing going across it or something like that like come on quit quit trying to be unique like just make it close to the source material and then add your uniqueness to it at that point i didn't like it um but anyway he saves them pulls them all the way in this little portal luke king's all sad that he's trash and that his homeboy got bodied uh, he's like, yo, we ain't gonna win because, you know, he was better than me because I'm trash. And then, like, somehow Cole just comes up with the best plan on how to, be to beat everybody. He's like, Sonya, you can beat the mess out of Kano. We already seen this. So you fight Kano. Uh, Liu Kang, you want revenge for Cabal stopping you. So go ahead, handle that. And then I'll I'll go uh, take on, uh, I guess, Melina or whoever it was. And then Jax, you could take on Rako because, you know, y'all was having a little battle. He was beating the brakes off you. So yeah, get revenge. So they go back. Uh, Sonya goes to find uh, Kano inside her little house. He's looking for uh, something. I don't know what he's looking for. I guess it's her. They fight. She ends up stabbing him in the head. And I guess he died. I'm not sure. But I feel like he didn't. But if we're going by the narrative, he did. Because apparently once you kill them, you get their little, their little dragon jump off. So he she got that after stabbing him in the eye. Um... Then it goes to, uh, I think, Jax. He's fighting Rayco, the most dopiest Rayco I've ever seen in my life. Um, which he's actually pretty fast, but he's slow and just a brute on this movie. Um, he takes him out, does his little head clapper, kills him. Ends him. That was a nice little Easter egg. You know, we got to see Jax finish the move. That's another problem with this movie. It's just like they're killing people just to kill them. Like, they don't have to kill everybody. It's kind of like uh, Tropic Thunder, where he told, uh, told him, don't go full retard. You, should, you never should go for full retard. Like they, they went full retard. Like they were just killing everybody just to show, like, hey man, we're gory, we're going for it. And it was like the people they just shouldn't kill. Like they didn't have to kill everybody. Like maybe two or three people. Uh, I say two, yeah, two or three people. But they was killing off everybody, and it was people they probably shouldn't have killed off. And I'll talk about that. But uh, kills Rako. Okay, Rako's dead. Even though Rako wasn't seen until Mortal Kombat Four. Um, so it was quite a while before we actually saw him. Now I got to look at the time period of Mortal Kombat Four. I think that was back in the day i think that was more of a prequel could have been no it wasn't no it wasn't it was actually yeah it was years back so yeah it didn't make sense that they killed him um so yeah killed rico goes to uh cole cole sees uh that sub-zero found his family because he comes in with a portal has like a little bracelet i guess he gave his daughter frees it breaks it cole's like oh nah runs into the portal with him uh goes out goes in there and then goro Prince Goro decides to come up. Goro goes in there beating the brakes off of him. Uh, Cole's wife tries to stop it. <clears throat> she hits him with an axe in the, the ribs. <clears throat> and then uh, Goro tosses Cole and he's like, hey, I'm about to kill this wolf. Like, what's she doing? Went over it while her and her daughter was in the car. Had the axe. They tried to drive it to Goro. He stops him. Starts beating the brakes off the roof of the car with the axe in his hands. Uh, Cole sees this <clears throat> and he starts to go super saiyan his arcana kicks in he starts getting mad his chest turns all yellowish and all this like metal stuff goes around his chest and his arm it kind of looks like the sub-zero not so scorpion's armor but it wasn't um it, and the way it worked was it was kind of like black panther's armor that he got in this, in this movie where he could absorb damage and then blow it back at you i didn't think he did that though but he just absorbed damage so he goes fight goro in this form to save his wife goro's hitting him he's just absorbing damage um, and then it gets to the point where he gets so mad that these little Tafa blades come out and they're fused to his arm or something. Uh, and he's holding those. <clears throat> so he gets, like, he gets like the corniest Arcana I've ever seen in my life. If this, I can see him as a good video game character, like a grappling character. Like I can see him as a good character, but in the movie, nah, not even. Uh, he, he has like the most garbage Arcana I've seen in my life. <laughs> but he, 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 he ends up defeating Goro and killing him. Which makes no sense because if you followed the true narrative and lore of Mortal Kombat, 
Goro has been like the reigning champion for about eight tournaments or so, or nine tournaments. He killed the original Kong Lao and defeated him because the original Kong Lao was the champion. Um, and he killed him. Uh, and that's how he was a champion. He was a champion for years to go. And then the person that knocked him off that pedestal was Liu Kang. Liu Kang was the one who beat him to become the new champion of Mortal Kombat. But how is that going to happen now when Cole killed him? Now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Shang Tsung said in the movie, death is nothing but another portal. So I'm guessing he's saying he can bring them back. I'm guessing maybe that's what's going to happen. That's going to have to happen because Molina and Goro are not supposed to be dead yet. Molina shouldn't even have been in the film. <laughs> but but they, she even had the mask on. She looked nothing like Molina. It was crazy. Like I don't even think she had purple on. But she's not even supposed to be in the film. And she wasn't Asian. But they had her in the film. Oh, yeah. And she got killed. She got killed. I forgot to mention that. She gets killed because she was fighting. Um, <clears throat> She was fighting somebody. I can't remember who it was. Uh, I think it was Cole. Cole was fighting her. And she was getting the best of Cole. And I think uh, Sonya teleports back somehow. How did she te- How did she appear back? Anyway, she, she teleported back somehow. And then she shot him with her arcana that she just somehow magically got instantly. With the little circular purple dillies. You know, that she normally does in video game. Now... She normally shoots that from a device, a weapon that was created for her that she has around her wrist. But not in this movie. She arcana the ability to do it straight from her arms. Because, again, changing the narrative. This is why the movie is kind of bad. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty dumb. But she ends up killing Melina. You see her whole chest and everything out. And it was crazy because Melina, like I said, her look was stupid. She only had the blade teeth. But her arcana that we saw during that fight was... She got mad and her teeth got super long and then the split got longer because they became more jagged. And then she actually looked like the Molina from the game with the teeth, which that's supposed to be her normal look. So, yeah, that was dumb, too. But anyway, she gets killed by Sonya, which doesn't make any sense because she's not supposed to die. Cabal got killed by Liu Kang. He did his little fire dragon engulfing thing because he got caught in some quicksand. So, all these is Bihan. <laughs> so, Cole... Races, chases Bihan back in the portal to see where his family is. They're back in a little destroyed building that's frozen. He starts fighting with him. He pulls out the uh, scorpion blade that was given to him by Raiden after he told him he was a descendant of Hanzo, which is Scorpion. Uh, it, Sub-Zero makes it cut his hand and his blood gets on it and then all of a sudden a change just goes through uh, Sub-Zero's shoulder or chest or whatever. And you know who it is. They look behind his Scorpion. He just magically comes back without the help of Quan Chi. And he, he does his little, get over here. And he pulls him over to him, which and this is good. He said, it sounded better in the trailer. I would say that it sounded worse than the trailer. It sounded much better in the movie. Um, pulls him over. And with the help of Cole, they pretty much defeat Bihan together. Um, which, honestly, Scorpion didn't need his help in the real lore. Like, he pretty much just took Sub-Zero out by himself. Uh, Because now he has a fire ability that can melt the ice and everything. So, like, it was pretty much no reason for him to need that man. But, um, ironically, Cole did the most damage. He did the most damage to to Sub-Zero. So, to the point where Sub-Zero was so hurt, um, Scorpio was like, leave him to me, to Bihan. I mean, to uh, Cole. Cole walks away to his family because Scorpio, like, melted the ice and somehow thawed out his family and they're still alive. But he couldn't do that to his family. His family was just dead, frozen. Um... But save his family or whatever. He was like, they'll leave him to me. So he, he walks up to him and he was like, yeah, remember this face. And he just lights him on fire. And as he's lighting him on fire, his face has the regular head, human face. But then all of a sudden, it starts burning away a little bit towards his nose. And you can see it's like a skeleton through there. So that was kind of like the homage to his, his original finishing move. Um, then he, he tells Cole to keep his bloodline going. And you freed him and everything. Thank you. I'm gone. Bye-bye. And then that's pretty much the end of the movie. Uh, the last part was Cole was just in the his old uh, training uh, locker room talking to, I guess, his trainer. He was like, oh, you're finally quitting? He was like, yeah. He was like, where are you going? He was like, I'm going to Hollywood. He was like, well, for what? He was like, it's not for what, for who? And then you see that he was going to go pick up Johnny Cage, and that was the end of the film. So all in all, it was a lot of good things that I liked about the film, mainly the gore. It was bloody, it was gory, it was Mortal Kombat. 
definitely was supposed to be that way in the 90s and that was the biggest letdown for me with the 90s film and that's why I didn't really like it that much even though I still enjoyed it I it just would have been much better if it had the gore and the blood that this movie had the problem though with this movie and what makes me not like it more than the 90s movie is the story is just so different they went a whole other way and it kind of it kind of destroys the timeline and negates a lot of things as part of the story like it it kind of rewrites things like again goro was the champion he got killed by cole and luke kane was supposed to be the one that took him out like luke kane was supposed to kill him like it's just so many things is wrong melina was not supposed to be there until like the second tournament uh her and katana both were supposed to show up and Melina just being black is just weird. Like, she's not supposed to be black. And then her look could have been so much better. Why give her the arcana and make her look like, look like that? Like, come on, son. And then just all the little nitpicks just ruin this movie. Like, it could have been so much better. Like, that alone just ruined it completely. The story just being so wrong and different. If they had the blood and gore on the 90s movie, it would have been perfect. I would have accepted that as a perfect video game movie. Just because the fact that they didn't have it ruined it again it seemed like they were killing people just to kill them it was way too much killing of like people that were big they were the big part of the story like they were not supposed to die this soon like they should not have killed off Goro they shouldn't have killed off Melina I don't even think they should have killed Cabal off Cabal comes in Mortal Kombat 3 like he's not supposed to be dead like, they could have picked another... Yeah, they could have... I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I know they have to kill people because there's finishing moves in there. They can't have everybody stay alive for all the tournaments. So, I can understand that part. But, like, some of the people, like, they, they just should not have killed off. Kung Lao definitely shouldn't have died. Like, they should have found, like... Reiko definitely could have died because he's a mini character nobody knows about unless you have Mortal Kombat 4 or whatever game it was after Deadly Alliance, whatever that game was. Uh, Natara... Uh, another one that could die she was only in one game that i can recall so her dying wouldn't have been a problem and they could have found a host of other characters that they could have put in the game uh borucho borucho could have been in the movie he could have been someone that was killed off uh all these people they these are characters that are that play a minor role in the, the in the in the game like i just feel like well borucho is kind of a major character but as in all the characters like he's not like a super fan favorite like that so like these are characters they could have killed off but that's just my opinion man on the movie uh it, it was okay hopefully they can do better if they do a, a, a sequel they i wish they could i wish my channel was big enough where they can actually watch this and hear like some of the outcry and stuff about it like again luke kang needs to sound like luke kang um they need to give him more direction like yo you need to sound like bruce lee they need to make him the I would love for them to kill Cole off. Like Cole needs to be gone. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if they killed him off at the beginning of the next movie, I would not have a problem. Like, Deadly Alliance him, just like they did with Luke Kang. Like, he literally was killed off at the beginning of the freaking game. Like, kill off Cole, I would not have a problem, yo. Make Luke Kang the chosen one. He needs to be that guy. He needs to know that he's that guy by the second movie. Um, I don't know what they can do to to have him win the tournament because Goro's gone like I guess they're gonna just do Kentaro and have Kentaro as the new guy but it was it's really supposed to be Goro but they can they can get away with making it Kentaro I guess or I don't know I don't know man but let me know in the comment section below I know this was a long video I just had a lot to talk about let me know in the comment section below how did you feel about this film did you think it was good what did you like about it and if you thought it was bad like I did or you just didn't really think it was that great it was like a mid movie let me know why, what was your grievances, what were your issues, what did you love about it, all that good stuff. Uh, just comment down below, I'm, I'm willing to hear people's opinions. Uh, if, you, if you do an opinion towards me, against one of my opinions, definitely look for me to reply back, because it's going to happen. Because I'm going to you know, defend why I said this or why that I said that. So, it uh, depends if I feel like it. If I'm bored at work, I'm definitely going to do it. But uh, this is your boy Tick, aka Game Fanatic, Michael Jordan the Gaming. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But I'm going to be gone! Bye!